Hey girls. Hey girls. Hey girls. Hi girls. been here before or if you've just seen a handful of my thumbnails you'd know that I really like to change my look. I use style and makeup as a form of expression like painting different looks onto a canvas. I'm very fashion forward. And I find that sometimes this kind of throws people off before they get to know me and like I totally understand. My style definitely clashes with my personality. I'm actually a huge tomboy but I just have a really strong appreciation for fashion and style whether it be makeup or clothing. I don't only watch gaming videos on YouTube but I I also like to keep up with a lot of beauty gurus for style inspiration. And in the last year or so, there's been an odd resurgence of early 2000s style in the beauty community. Yes, these denim disasters have somehow managed to creep their way back into the mainstream. Things that weren't even hot when they were hot are now hot. People want to look like Bratz dolls. Kimora Lee Simmons just recently bought back and is planning on relaunching Baby Fat, and I'm deathly afraid that low riding will come back with a vengeance. Listen man, nobody wants to see your poop stained pants. That ain't high roll. This new look is a strange combination of high fashion, yacht club, I stole your mans, I stole your daddy, Regina George, but also somehow urban look. Which I'm neither completely for nor completely against. I think they both have their own pros and cons, but that's a whole other topic for a whole other video. But some people have taken this look a step further in a challenge known as the Bratz Challenge, where people literally transform themselves into Bratz dolls. I mean, why not pay homage to the early pioneers of this current fashion trend? A lot of our early exposure to the beauty community was either through fashion dolls like Bratz or Barbie after all. Bratz didn't come around until 2001, so a lot of my fondest memories with fashion dolls were more so with Barbies. By the time Bratz became more of a household name around 2003, I was like 12 and my interest shifted less away from toys and more so focused on video games. My little sister, however, was right within that age demographic. Graphic. I think you know where I'm going with this. My little sister was not only hooked on the dolls, but also the games. And I would catch glimpses of her playing some of these from time to time. And I'm gonna be honest, the gameplay didn't look all that appealing to me. But she seemed to have a lot of fun with them, and if she didn't, then she wouldn't have had all those games, right? But then again, she also has every Kingdom Hearts game known to man. That's right, I'm talking re-releases, bundles, HD masters. So I can't quite say I entirely trust her judgment. I heard that. Oh, sorry. Didn't think you could hear me. I thought I was in front of a green screen for a second. The Bratz were so influential in the early 2000s and were thriving in all markets. They highlighted this urban slash chic lifestyle in ways that Barbie could just never measure up to. Their toy line was quickly complemented with an animated series, music, a live action movie, and even console games. So I've decided that in today's video, I'm gonna take on the Bratz challenge. Let's see if one of these lucky games lived up to the success of the toy line. I think in today's episode, I wanna cover the Bratz Rock Angels game. Why did I pick this game out of all the others you ask? Well, it just looks cooler to me. It's very early 2000s and the cover art just pops out. It has an edgy look to it and it's giving me some serious Paper Dolls Palace meets School of Rock vibes. I don't know what to expect, but I'm kind of excited to play this one. With there being such a strong emphasis on rhythm games, we might get something fun like Taiko Drum Master or something that you'd see in Guitar Hero. I mean, it certainly looks good on paper. How bad can it be? So it looks like we're gonna have to play it. Follow me as I explore the world of the Bratz Rock Angels. Bratz Rock Angels with a Z because it's edgy is a single player adventure game released October the 6th, 2005 for the Game Boy Advance, PlayStation 2, GameCube, and the PC. According to the back of the box, by playing this game, you have the chance to live the life of a rock angel. Still not really sure what that is. Is it some sort of sentient being of rock? As you help the Bratz launch their own fashion magazine, where you'll get to travel around the globe meeting famous people and visiting famous places on your adventure. You'll also get to customize your look, shop for the latest fashion, and start your very own rock band. Yeah, okay, I'm down to rock. The game opens following my personal favorite Bratz girl, Jade, as she approaches her best friends Chloe, Sasha, and Yasmin at the smoothie bar with some great news. Jade lets the other girls know she's successfully scored a student internship assisting chief editor Burdine Maxwell at the infamous Your Thing magazine. Mother of Pink! 
uh, yeah, Burdine and everyone else who works at Your Thing magazine, including Mean Girls Kirsty and Casey, also known as the Tweevils, are, you guessed it, an obvious and not so subtle jab at the absurdity that is Barbie and her all-encompassing obsession with pink. Mmm, pink. My favorite color. That's right, Barbie is shallow and pink is gross. Brats? They're not like other girls. The brats are edgy girls. See, at the time that these dolls came out, they were really subverting the norm of what it meant to be girly. And now they are the norm. It's kind of funny how that works out. Unfortunately, sweet, innocent Jade's time at the internship is cut short after being sabotaged by the Tweevils and is fired on the spot, leaving her with no internship for the summer break. Down in the dump, she meets up with her friends and gives them all the bad news. Jade is clearly distraught and lets the other girls know that she's just not in the mood for fun and decides to call it a day. And what do her caring and loving friends do instead of giving her that time and space to mourn a potentially important career opportunity? They throw that bitch a surprise party. You know, while these girls' ever-flowing optimism is admirable, they really don't know how to read a room. So they end up hosting a surprise party at Chloe's and present Jade with her own new wardrobe and makeup set to help her feel better. Hey, cool cat! Looking good, girl! Oh yeah, I almost forgot. The brats will often refer to one another using pet names like Bunny Boo, Cool Cat, and Pretty Princess, which pretty much emulates the slang of the early 2000s where you'd hear a lot of young teens using phrases like totally and that's so fetch. Really corny, outdated vernacular that I'm so glad never made its way back into the mainstream. I'm glad this trendy talk kind of died out when it did. Oh, uh, hold, hold on a second. Hello? Oh my god. Oh my god. Yes. Yes, girl. Oh my god. Yes. I stan. I stan. That's amazing. Oh my god. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. can I call you back, girl? Okay, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sure, sure. Okay, okay. Love you too. Bye. What? The surprise party is successful, and after switching outfits and strutting her stuff in a very stupid minigame, the girls are now in high spirits and say, f*** it, we don't need that bum-ass magazine, we can make our own. So Sasha takes them to a rundown, empty lot in the same building as Your Thing magazine, and the girls band together to make it more fashion-forward, so they can use it as their office space to work on their magazine. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Oh. We aren't even fully into the gameplay, and I already have so many questions. Who is funding all this? They're in high school. These are some of the most privileged girls you're ever gonna find. The fact that they had the money to rent out office space, even if the space was a rundown mess, how did they afford all the renovations? I'm inclined to believe that maybe they didn't need summer jobs and that this magazine is basically just a passion project for these girls with their small loan of a million dollars their parents gave to them. I shouldn't even be surprised at how frivolous these girls are with spending. They seem to think in this game money grows on trees. Despite completing a handful of tasks and side quests, you can just just as easily earn cash through farming the landscape for something known as bling tokens. These things seem to spawn wherever and whenever they want, and once you grab them, they respawn in a matter of seconds. Now after all of that, I can finally dive into the core gameplay. Each character has their own workstation that lists unique missions they need to complete in order to fill their own pages of the magazine. These jobs are split up amongst the brats, and if you aren't feeling like completing one mission, you can easily switch off to the next character simply by interacting with another brat. Rat, which prompts a brief animation of the characters high-fiving one another that honestly looks like they're taking swings at each other. You have to navigate through both the work and mall plazas in order to complete your objectives. And the navigation in this game can be such a pain in the ass. You aren't given an inventory map, but rather there's little stations sprinkled around the plaza to tell you exactly where you are. And don't get me started on how poorly designed the map is. Jesus. Not only can getting around be a little confusing at times, but you're going from place to place, walking around in 5 inch heels, so it feels like a lot of the times you're moving at snail speed. I can only imagine Imagine how much that must hurt in real life. The only way you're able to move faster is through the use of rollerblades, which only becomes available in like the third half of the game. This is a PlayStation 2 game! What's with this outdated Pokemon mechanic? Give me a goddamn bike or something. Or at least give me the ability to sprint. Speaking of abilities, in this game, the brats both simultaneously hold your hand at every corner and also talk down to you like you're a complete moron. That's right, they do this thing that I like to call... 
I don't know, brat splaining. It's kind of like the concept of mansplaining, except it happens with the brat stalls. And you'd better get used to it because it happens all the time. Whether you're learning how to use your cell phone or they're telling you about makeup, this gets to be really annoying because you literally have to wait for them to stop talking before you can do anything, as opposed to their dialogue just skipping to the next bit and allowing you to have free movements and control. This limitation really sucks the fun out of sequences that are supposed to be more or less an interactive experience. And the worst part is, they're not even really explaining anything of importance. You wouldn't believe how many times I was stopped when applying the girl's makeup because anytime I'd click on a new item, I had to sit through them telling me what wet wipes and lipstick does like I'm some kind of moron. Press the X button on the little picture under our current compact and pick out a new one from the menu that appears. You need to select the treasures oh, compact it. before select okay. That's for putting on eyeshadow. When you move it closer to my eye, I'll okay. move my face to make it easier. So I put a makeup on. Use the X button to move one one square. Square. And to add insult to injury, after you've been babied for over an hour with constant tutorials, they decide to hit you with a low blow and make you feel utterly useless when you don't do what they ask of you fast enough. <clears throat> Press the triangle button? Are you just messing with me? You think you talking to? Yeah, not only are the brats incredibly hot and cold towards you, but so are the people you interact with in this game, which is so confusing because you're supposed to be like the it girl fashionistas that everybody supposedly wants to be like. The characters seem to clown you at every goddamn corner. It's the outfit that no one else would have the guts to wear. Is it Halloween already? Is that Dylan over there? I don't know what I think about him. Oh, come on, Dylan. How bad can he be? Hey there, Jade. You look good. Uh, not as good as me but close. Boy, if you don't- What an absolute bunch of dicks. Some of these side quests really reveal the true colors of how self-interested and selfish these damn characters are. Um, this is kind of embarrassing, but, well, I've kind of dropped that article I was working on for the magazine. I don't suppose you could help me round up the pages. Sucker. I mean, thanks! These characters are so self-interested and can be so disingenuous. And speaking of disingenuous, I don't even trust the brats half of the time. Every time they talk to me, they use incredibly descriptive language to the point that it sounds like they're being held against their will and are speaking in code to the police, or that they're secretly sponsored and are advertising their every move and just don't want to own up to it. I suppose I should select that text from Chloe and press the X button to read it. I feel so down I can barely even bring myself to follow the arrow that's pointing towards the smoothie bar. Who talks like that? That's not real. What the? I just want to rock out. When are we going to get through all this bullshit? When does the good part show up? So finally, after completing a few side missions, we finally get some story progression. While sifting through her old boss's mail, which is, by the way, illegal, Jade finds invitations to an all-expenses-paid trip to see the band Crash at Pins, a punk rock club located in London. London. London? London? Yes. London. And they figured this would be the perfect event to cover for their magazine. It's a win-win situation. But their excitement is short-lived. Surprise, surprise. The tickets have been stolen by none other than the Tweevil Underwoods. And in order to steal back what is rightfully ours, which actually isn't ours, but okay, we have to distract both the Gross sisters so we can sneak into Burdine's office and take the tickets while she's soundly sleeping. Successfully distracting one of the twins with a fake pink sale promotion, we're tasked with disguising ourselves as a Tweevil in order to sneak past past the other twin. And man, is this not a good idea because she can totally see past our disguise. Ah, what are you wearing? I need to be a bit more tactful with my disguise. Hey, Sasha. <laughs> You think we fooled him? <laughs> Got him. After successfully stealing back the tickets, we finally head to London. We rock! We're hot! And we're going to London! <laughs> So we finally made it to the land of tea and crumpets. We finally get to rock out. Major bad news, Angel. Serious disaster. I just spin the pins and guess what? Crash have split up. <laughs> yeah, shortly after arriving to London, the girls discover that the band they flew out to see has in fact disbanded indefinitely. So instead they decide to do the next best thing and that's during their very own rock concert. Which is great because so far we haven't done anything music related and it would be really nice to get to that. But before we can rock out, we need to make our own posters and race around the city to replace the old band posters for our own. And just like with the t-shirt design, you're given some freedoms to customize the posters however you- 
Why is she white? What did they do to Sasha? Damn, they really gave her the Aunt Vivian treatment, didn't they? After plastering up posters and dressing the brats up in clothing under the Rock Angels line, it is finally time to rock. <laughs> yes. Here we go. Huh? You're on stage and have to rock out for the crowd, but instead of engaging in any sort of rhythm games you'd expect to encounter at this point, you have to follow a sequence of button combinations to strike poses and not play any instruments? That's right, throw that guitar out the window, it's time to do the drop and shop, the cover up, and my personal favorite, the kick back bounce, also known as the bend and snap. This is pretty much the same as the posing mini games I've been playing this whole time. Where's the variety? Where's the rhythm? Where are the cool guitar solos? And that's it, people seem to love it, we take a couple photos of the magazine and it ends up outselling our rivals at Your Thing magazine. What kind of a conclusion is that? I've taken pictures of wildlife, done a few posing challenges, did my hair and makeup, and did some silly clothing design mini games, but no rocking? Talk about anticlimactic. Oh man, I guess it's over. We'll have to work extra hard to make the second issue just as great. What? We've already got some great ideas for articles on our computers. Let's get to it. No, 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 no! You're telling me I have to do that all over again just to get to the true ending? After all that work, if you want to see the true and final ending, aka if you want to get the ending where the girls finally get to rock, you essentially have to play similar mini games in order to fill up the second issue of your magazine. Oh sh. Here we go again. In this last half of the game, not much happens story-wise. Hey, what the- This time, the girls go to Paris, pose here, dance there, take photos of landmarks. Oh, and they all get duped into signing contracts for what they thought was their dream job, but in the end, turns out to be a revenge plot exacted by Burdeen for outshining her. All the girls receive fake opportunities of a lifetime, except for Jade. Oh, and once again, we see the girls' loyalty really come to play. Group hug. Okay, girls, come see me in London when you get a chance. They really just left this bitch out in the dust. Jade, I know you're not real, but I would never do anything like that to you. When the girls discover they've all been duped, it's up to Jade to save the game. Hardy har, girls. I bet you wish you didn't abandon me so quickly. And you have to, get this, race Burdeen to retrieve and destroy the contract the girls signed with her. Uh, let me tell you, this beast is hard to beat in heels alone. My sister told me the only way she could outrun this harpy was through using rollerblades. Celebrate their win, the fall of your thing magazine and the completion of their latest magazine, the girls finally decide to put on a rock show. Yes! <laughs> I can't tell you how excited I am for this! So many hours put into this game, I just can't wait! An AMV. An AMV? Is that an AMV? An AMV! Ooh, you suck! I need a second. I feel so cheated. We never played any mini games that even came close to looking like a rhythm game. The storyline was dumb and the missions were repetitive. A part two was completely unnecessary and the build up and conclusion was garbage. Sure, I get it. The game is for kids, so it's by default not really expected to be a masterpiece, but this game wasn't even as advertised. Don't call it the Bratz Rock Angels if there's no rocking. You might as well call it Bratz the Magazine. I feel so let down. And even though it's all said and done, I'm left confused at the sheer fact that the only redeemable quality about this game is ironically its soundtrack. How does that even make sense? It's like they spent all their time and money focusing on the music and then slapped the game together last minute. And yeah, for a toy line, some of these tracks are actually on par with mainstream rock music you'd hear in the early 2000s coming from a lot of teen bands. It just, it just really makes you want to get up and dance, you know?
my god, we're finally done! Holy crap! If you guys like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want to help me make videos like this, consider donating to me over on Patreon. Patrons get neat little bonus features and extra additional prizes. We're still trying to get to 50k before the end of May, so let's hope we can make that happen. I'm Bob Dunga, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye!